What's going on YouTube? John here. Thank you for joining Blue Carbon Reefing. You have guessed it, I am currently battling a pretty nasty outbreak of dinoflagellants. Uh, I'm going to give you a little background of what has happened with the tank and I uh, wanted to show you guys what everything looks like right now um, because for a lot of people in the hobby uh, this is kind of a tank killer. This is something that a lot of people will completely shut down or reset their tank. Uh, you know to try to get rid of this because it is one of those things that there really isn't a whole lot of uh, Scientific knowledge or a whole lot of information out there on the internet to try to be able to uh, You know simply dose a chemical to get rid of something so I uh, wanted to show you my struggles with this and how I am going to try to battle it and this will probably end up being a two or three part video um, because this is not going to be something that overnight will go away. It's definitely going to be a little bit of a battle or something that I expect to take multiple weeks. So again, wanted to show you kind of what this looks like right now. Um, you saw the frag tank at the beginning of the video. Definitely looks pretty nasty. Um, under the, uh, the gel filter, it does actually look pretty red. However, under the white lights, it is kind of more of a brownie, snotty looking... Um, you know kind of algae that is just covering everything luckily some of the corals aren't really getting um, Too covered up some of the zoanthids are really not liking it But as far as some of the other SPS corals are not really being affected however, it's very unsightly and it's definitely something that um, You know shutting your lights off for a few days. is really not going to solve the problem so Really going to take a few minutes here and kind of go through what I am doing and um, then obviously we'll probably break this video up into another part or two and kind of give you guys updates of what's from going on from there. So hopefully if you are watching this video because maybe you are dealing with the same thing that you can kind of learn from my mistakes or what I have done. Um, you know, right at the same time to try to make sure that we can eradicate this, that we're not going to just shut down the tank and give up, but we're going to obviously, you know, fight this battle and, and win this battle. So first and foremost, what I tried to do is I tried to start by um, dosing some bacteria. And I don't have a regular schedule I should as far as dosing bacteria, um, but I do kind of dose as I see certain problems arise for like, for example, this, which I thought maybe was a cyanobacteria or something like that. Um, you know, just trying to dose bacteria to, you know, help battle the problem. You know, having a beneficial bacteria in your system is always a good thing. I don't think you could ever really overdo it when it comes to dosing bacteria. Um, however, um, I originally had thought that the problem, uh, especially because under the blues it looked more reddish, was cyanobacteria. So I did dose ChemiClean to the tank. Um, and it did not solve the problem. I actually really did absolutely nothing with it, which to me uh, more so kind of confirmed that it was not cyanobacteria, but something much worse. So um, next order of business was we have to identify exactly what this is. So, you know, there are different strands of dinoflagellants, so you kind of have to um, you know, find out which strand it is so you kind of know maybe what's worked for other reefers in the past. Uh, I do want to give a shout out or do a reference to Reef to Reef. Uh, McCarroll, one of the um, persons there, he obviously has started a, a thread there that is well over 340 pages worth of stuff to go through, but a lot of people there are very helpful as far as trying to help identify uh, or help you in terms of what's going to solve the problem, what's worked for them. Um, so I wouldn't say it's going to be 100% on every, every single case. Everybody's got a different tank or different things going on, different, uh, different nutrient levels, different feeding habits, you know, stuff like that. But um, there is kind of some, some, you know, baseline now as far as what can you do to try to get rid of this. So um, what I started to realize is I need to... Um, my ratios of things and you guys have known if you follow my channel uh, nitrates are way high and phosphates have always been in line for me they've always been 0 0.02 0 0.03 0 0.04 I think the highest I've ever seen is 0 0.07 um, when I'm you know testing for my phosphates so what I'm realizing is my tank is actually um, a little bit too low in phosphates those readings that I'm getting are obviously um, maybe not 
it's throughout the entire water column you know maybe the rocks and sand are going to be absorbing phosphates where you know maybe sometimes when I test I'm getting a reading but really not having enough especially with nitrates being so high my phosphate should be a little bit higher so one of the things that normally is helpful with eradicating dinos no matter which strain you have um, is having your nutrients elevated so normally you'll see people you know dosing nitrates and phosphates and in my case uh, I chose not to dose nitrates because I already have nitrates in the level of 80 100 something parts per million so uh, that was already high but I did decide to um, you know start dosing phosphates so as you can see here, I actually picked up on, in a powdered form from a company called Greenleaf. I can obviously leave the link below in the description, um, some powdered form of monopotassium phosphate. So this is all uh, going to be kind of a mixture of potassium and phosphate at the same time. I do dose potassium to my tank, so I kind of cut that completely off while I was dosing this. Uh, and I mixed up a solution in this kind of 1,000 milliliter container um, to really each dose, dose anywhere between 0.01 to 0.03 uh, phosphates, parts per million phosphates into the tank. Uh, you're not going to be able to see this. I am uh, going to show you kind of one test, but I was pretty much testing phosphates every single day uh, before I would end up, um, you know, dosing the phosphates. So for quite a while, actually about maybe a week to two weeks of doing this, uh, phosphate was remaining very low. Uh, I'd have a little bit of a fluctuation. It was like maybe on the the HANA Ultra um, low range, it was kind of reading maybe 17 to 20 parts per billion uh, phosphorus, which is like 0 0.06, 0 0.07, um, I think parts per million is what it would translate to. So um, it was continuously obviously staying low in, in my understanding, and again, research uh, was telling me that rocks and sand, those types of things can absorb phosphate. So as you're dosing, you kind of want to be careful because there will be a point where the phosphate will be kind of saturated into those things and then it will start releasing. So you will see eventually it will jump up, uh, but sometimes it may take a couple weeks, two, three weeks of doing this before you know those things are saturated and then obviously you start to see your phosphates climb, which is exactly um, what I did see happening. So um, next order of business, I actually picked up a kids microscope. So I will also leave the description down below. I got it for $12.99 on Amazon. I think when I last looked it was $13.99, but it's a kid's microscope. It has 100 to 1200 times magnification, um, and it comes with a little nifty little cell phone holder so you can kind of take pictures. Uh, and the reason I did this is, one, I didn't want to spend two, three hundred dollars on a really good microscope. How many times are you really going to use it? But I did want to have something in my arsenal that I was able to kind of use to, to actually identify what type or strand of dinoflagellants that I have. Like I said before, there are multiple different strands. Um, so I took some pictures, which you'll see here, and some videos of the actual um, dinoflagellant. So just kind of taking a water sample and looking at it under this microscope. And believe it or not, with this little thing, and it is not very steady, so you kind of have to make sure that it's on a, a level surface and it's not being bumped in to there's no vibration because obviously it will move around but um, can get some decent pictures and videos with a little you know $12 microscope so pretty impressed actually and I will actually recommend this to people um, I will probably use this more often than I will really think I never really I've been reefing for years and I never had one of these but I don't know why I haven't picked up one of these before because this thing is actually pretty cool um, so I will um, kind of show you the pictures here in the videos of what everything looks like and that way I was able to take those same pictures and videos and post it on the Reef to Reef forum and kind of help maybe someone who's more of an expert to me and obviously this area help identify what strand so I know that the courses of action that I am taking uh, of course is on the right course of action. I had already started phosphate dosing, uh, nitrates are obviously high in my tank so Elevated nutrients is normally something that no matter what strand is going to help. So I just wanted to recap exactly what's going on. So I thought originally I had an outbreak of cyanobacteria. Um, so I originally started by first dosing just regular bacteria. Uh, I don't have a regular schedule of dosing bacteria, but I wanted to, uh, you know, obviously try to dose the beneficial bacteria, which will hopefully maybe uh, outcompete the, the cyanobacteria. That didn't work. 
I next tried um, ChemiClean because, again, I still thought it was cyanobacteria, which after two, three days a week, it did absolutely nothing. Uh, the problem started to get continuously worse. Um, so I started to see kind of the slimy kind of things where I kind of knew um, by looking at it and seeing pictures and talking to people that it was dinoflagellants. So I started going online. Obviously, I found the forum on Reef to Reef in this uh, you know, kind of really helped me kind of give me a baseline of what I should start doing. So I ordered some uh, potassium to start dosing to my tank uh, to help kind of elevate the nutrients. And I ordered a microscope at the exact same time, uh, which took a little bit longer to get to me. Uh, but um, that way I was actually able to look at the strand of what I'm looking at or dealing with under the microscope and really get some help on what I needed to do. So Poro Centrum is what it appears that for the most part is what I have as far as dinoflagellants, which isn't the worst one, but uh, really what was recommended is to one, raise your nutrients, try to keep your phosphates at probably a brown 0.1, uh, which is I, what I've been doing you know, over the, for the last couple of weeks. So I'm gonna end the video here. We're coming on 11 to 12 minutes. So I just kind of want to give you guys uh, kind of a recap of what's going on. Like I said, if this is something that you're battling with, hopefully this video will help you. Stay tuned. There will be, you know, a second or a third part and give you updates of what's going on because I am absolutely going to beat this thing. And, um, you know, I want to be able to help share my experience with you guys of, of what's going on because this really isn't something that should be something that you would just start your whole tank over on. It is something that can be beaten uh, and will be beaten. So, Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I really appreciate it. If this is your first time here and you like what you're seeing, check out some of my other videos and of course uh, hit that subscribe button. And if you'd like to be notified of all my future videos, especially the second or third parts of this actual series, you definitely want to hit that notification bell. So again, thank you guys so much for stopping by and happy reefing.